guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and I'm documenting my journey to lose 100 pounds. In today's video, I wanted to go over my five tips for starting a weight loss program or whatever you want to call it, a uh, weight loss journey. Um, I meant to do this at the very beginning of January, but my... <sighs> my motivation or whatever has kind of escaped me. But I always knew that not having a plan for Christmas or planning to just do what I wanted to do meant that there was a chance that I would mess up my entire plan for everything else and just stop working out and eating right. In the past, eating bad has led to eating bad for a long time before I would get back on track. So when I did my video for January's goals to not eat fast food and all of that, I thought that that would help rein me back in a little bit. It did work for a little while. Uh, Chris and I did end up eating some pizza and uh, twice and what else did we have? I don't remember. We had something else that was takeout. I can't. Oh, Chinese food. That's what it was. We had two pizzas and Chinese, which I suppose in the long run isn't really all that bad. But when you have a goal to eat none, eating it three times is probably bad. So we'll just say it's bad. I haven't been working out and I've just kind of been watching TV and playing bingo online because I play bingo. <laughs> So I haven't really been doing a whole lot of anything. Um, and I'm sure as you know, I haven't put out a video. I put out one video this month and it's for like three minutes long or something. So it was hardly a video, but I hope I'm back now. And I think, uh, no, I am back now. And on Monday, Chris and I are going to start working out again. So we planned a little cabin getaway vacation anniversary thing that we're going to be doing in May. Our anniversary is in February. It'll be our six year anniversary on February 5th. So we're very excited about that. But going to the cabin in the mountains in February without four-wheel drive is probably not the smartest thing to do. So we decided to put it off until May when we know there won't be any snow or rain or anything. So we have something fun to look forward to. We haven't done anything in a very long time, as I'm sure a lot of people haven't since there's this craziness going on. But we think we can be safe enough going to a cabin alone, that uh, driving there and everything. So hopefully that'll be really cool, but it gives us something to look forward to, something to work towards. So we're both ready to get back into working out and we've already been eating normally. We we had the fast food three times, but the rest of the time we've been eating the regular food that um like our diet food. I mean, it's not really diet food. It's just lower calorie versions of regular food basically. So, all that rambling aside, I was saying all of that just to lead up to the fact that I wanted to make a video with my top 5 tips for starting a weight loss program. Obviously, there's like the regular ones you hear most people talk about like drink more water, eat healthy, like that kind of stuff. Like obviously all those things are good too, but I wanted to come up with things that I wish somebody had told me or maybe that I've just figured out along the way that I thought might be helpful for other people. So my number one tip is not to compare yourself and your journey to anyone else's. Not even mine. Don't compare yourself to me. Unless you're doing better, then that's great. Um, but you don't want to compare yourself to other people's journeys because everybody's different. The way that everybody's body reacts to things is different. And like, you don't know what that person is really doing, especially people that you see online. A lot of it is like lighting and angles and things that make people look a certain way that if you saw them in person, they don't even look like that. So don't compare yourself or what you're doing or how you're doing it to anyone else, because I think that it just sets you up for a negative feeling. I've realized in my weight loss journey that my mental state is really important. Trying to stay positive and feel good about what I'm doing is very important. The second that I start to let those negative feelings of I'm not doing good enough, I'm not losing fast enough, I'm not doing what someone else is doing, and what they're doing is working for them, maybe it would be better for me. Once I start thinking along those lines, I tend to make myself 
want to stop doing it altogether. And that is the biggest problem for me is keeping my motivation and wanting to continue. So I try to keep myself in a positive mind frame and not compare myself to others. My journey is my journey. And I'm just putting it out here so that maybe you can pick up a few things from me that might be helpful. It's really not like this is the blueprint on how to lose weight because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing what I think will work. And it has been working for me. But what I do may not work for you. You may like doing something completely different, completely opposite of what I do. And that's fine. I just want you to do what works for you and not worry so much about what other people are doing. So that's my first tip. So my second tip is to take lots and lots of before pictures. Take as many as you can from all different angles. Try to get really good lighting if you can. The more embarrassing pictures, the better. I took some pictures, but I was too embarrassed to let my belly out of my pants so that you could really get a good look at it. Especially if you're not doing a YouTube, like if they're just for you, do the really embarrassing ones. Do them in your underwear and your bra. Do it so that you can see as much of you as possible. The more embarrassed you are to take the picture, the better it's gonna be later. Sometimes it feels like I haven't really changed in what I look like when I'm just seeing myself normally, like every day you see yourself. So it's it seems like sometimes I don't look any different than when I started. But then when I look at my before pictures compared to now, it's crazy how different I look. And so it's a huge motivator. Definitely take the pictures. I know that it's not fun and it can actually be like triggering and like super depressing to take them. But I promise you, you're going to be really happy you did later, like really happy. So do it. Take the pictures. Lots of them. My third tip is to find a way to keep yourself accountable. I like to use a tracker where I list out a bunch of things that I want to do every day to help me lose weight and I track whether or not I did that that day. I do it for the month, that way I can have a good representation when it's over to see what I need to work on for the next month. So I'm using this mini poster board that I got from Walmart with my grocery delivery and a dressmaker's ruler because it's the only one I had that was big enough to make like a grid here. And so on the left hand side, I'm gonna list out all the things that I want to do. And then I make a little box for each day that I get to fill in if I did what I was supposed to do for that day. Um, so I make two little marks and then I line up the marks to make a straight line. It's just the easiest way that I've found to do it. Um, it's not perfect, but uh, it's close enough that it makes me happy. So it works, I guess. And then um, I use colored pens to write out all of the things that I wanna do. And then I use that color to fill in the box for each thing. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Once I have my grid all drawn, I'm gonna go ahead and write the uh, day of the week across the top instead of putting like a number. Um, because I didn't have enough space to put numbers when I started doing this, I figured out that the first letter of the day of the week works better. And so then I write out all of the things that I want to do, like weigh in every day and try to get eight hours of sleep every day, take my vitamins and all the water and my fiber that I have to take because of my IBS. And so once I have all that filled in, I will fill in what I did yesterday so that you can see what it looks like as I fill it out. So then when I miss something the day that I'm supposed to do it, I fill it in with an X with pen. And then if I wasn't supposed to do that thing that day, I fill it in with black so that I know that I didn't miss it. I just wasn't supposed to do it that day. But really the only things that I work out like that are working out and walking. Those are the only things that I really wouldn't be doing every day. Basically everything else I do every day. And so you see once I get to the end of the month, I'm going to end up having either a really nice rainbow or I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of is, but it'll give me a really quick representation of how I did for the month and the things that I need to work on. My fourth tip is going to be to eat in a calorie deficit. So you don't have to pick a crazy diet to lose weight. You don't have to do keto. You don't have to do 
uh, Whole30 or Paleo or any of that stuff. You don't have to. I mean, you can if you want to. And if that's what you're doing, it's totally fine. I'm not trying to say that there's anything wrong with it. But honestly, all you need to do is make sure that you are burning more calories than you're eating. It's literally that simple. In one of my previous videos, I'll have Chris link it somewhere for you. I went through how to figure out a calorie deficit that works for you. It's literally the only thing that makes you lose weight. It doesn't make any difference if your calories come from carbs, fat, or protein. It makes no difference. It's all about how many calories you're eating and how many calories you're burning. So as long as you eat in a calorie deficit, you will lose weight. And I think that once I figured that out, once I finally, I guess, believed that, that that was really what was going on, it made everything seem so much easier. Like you don't have to be in some crazy calorie deficit to lose weight. I'm in like a 500 calorie deficit, usually roughly 500, sometimes probably even less than that. And I lose weight. I mean, I've lost quite a bit of weight now. I don't know... I don't know what my total weight loss is. I weighed in this morning at my lowest weight. It was 212.8. So I've been, what was it? 248.8 minus 212.8. 36 pounds, I think. Yeah. So now I've lost 36 pounds and I did it all through just eating regular food in a calorie deficit. You don't have to do anything crazy. It's not necessary. I've tried keto, tried all those other diets in the past, and it's way harder than it needs to be. It's it's just not even necessary to do all that to yourself. Just eat less calories and you'll be fine. My last tip is to don't beat yourself up when you mess up. Um, so I guess technically this past like month-ish, I've been messed up. I haven't been doing my workouts. I haven't been... I haven't been tracking what I've been eating. So the way that I figure out what I'm eating in a week is I eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then I have a snack in between lunch and dinner, and I have an ice cream cone for dessert after dinner. So I basically have like a three to 400 calorie breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then I have a yogurt for a snack in between my lunch and dinner and an ice cream cone. It keeps me around 1,500 calories even when I'm not like literally tracking every day. I eat the same thing almost every day during the week. So it makes it easier. So even though I haven't been tracking every single thing I eat, I haven't been eating anything out of the ordinary. So I've just kind of stuck to my, I don't know, like my weekly menu or whatever that I make, which keeps me on track even when I'm not kind of paying attention. So I haven't been tracking, but I also haven't been just like eating crazy amounts of food. With my IBS being triggered by the amount of food that I eat, it kind of helps keep me from binging like a wild amount of food like I have in the past. So that's helpful. But the point was that I've been messed up this whole month, basically, not doing what I was supposed to do. But I don't really see it as messing up because I am back on track now. I'm back it below my weight I was before Christmas. And I haven't been eating a crazy amount of fast food or anything like that. We're going to start working out again on Monday. So I think really the, the point of this is that the only time you've really messed up is if you just quit and you don't start again. Just don't give up. That's the whole point. You've just got to keep going. And even if it takes you three months to start again, it's fine. Just start again. Just keep going. Don't stop. And eventually you'll get where you want to be. And I think the longer you can do it for, the easier it gets. Once it becomes more like a routine, it starts to feel weird when you're not doing it. Not going for walks and not doing my workouts seems odd to me now. I'm I'm ready to get back into it and start doing it again and hopefully get back in the groove of making my YouTube videos too. I, I miss doing this. I'm happy to be back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry about all the crazy rambling. It's been a while, so I feel like I haven't talked to anybody and I just had a lot of random stuff to say, so... <laughs> <laughs> if you made it through this whole thing, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. 
And I hope maybe you got a tip or two that would help you on your journey. Um, But if you haven't subscribed and you want to, I'd appreciate it if you did. And hit that like button for me. And I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.